This strawberry drink may not exactly be part of my resolutions for 2023, but that's okay. And speaking of New Year's resolutions, how are you doing with yours now that we're hitting the end of February? Well, I spoke with Melissa Urban and about her new book of boundaries about how setting limits can help us in many different aspects of life. You know, you are so well known in the health and wellness world for your wildly popular Whole30 program that made you just kind of an icon when it comes to thinking about a different way to approach the health of our bodies. What made you want to write this book that has a lot to do with boundaries? Yes. So the Whole30 is an elimination program and you say no a lot for those 30 days. And I quickly discovered that people on the program really struggled to say no to the break room donuts or the wine at happy hour, especially when they were faced with social pressure or peer pressure. So I began helping them in 2009 say no to those circumstances. And then once they figured out I was really good at that, they started saying, well, how do I say no to my mother-in-law who's always dropping by without calling? How do I say no to my coworker who's always texting me out of hours? We started having these boundary conversations on Instagram and through email many years Years ago, and that was where the idea for the book of boundaries came from. I think it's so important. You know, someone once said to me once, uh, we don't put up boundaries to be a mean person. We put up boundaries to have better relationships with people, right? Yes. Boundaries are designed to keep you safe and healthy, but to improve your relationships. They're an invitation to say, I want you in my life. And I have this limit that you probably didn't even know existed. So I'm going to share it kindly and invite you to meet me in this limit so that our relationship can feel just as good to both of us. I love that. The saying no to the break room donut and kind of keeping our mental fortitude strong. You know, February is a lot of it's a very common time for our resolutions to slip. I've even found myself becoming a little more negligent of the things I said, I'm going to be good at this. Why is that? Why is it that we can only make it a month sometimes? You know, the sh brightness and shininess of New Year's resolutions is often enough to see us through the first week or two weeks of the year. But if we don't set boundaries with other people and with ourselves around the healthy habits we want to continue, we're going to mm. start working out in the morning, or we're going to journal, or we're not going to drink alcohol at home during the week. If we don't set boundaries around those behaviors, other people's needs and feelings and expectations start to creep into that time that we've said we set aside for ourselves. Such a good point. It's so true. I've realized I need to say no a lot more uh, so that I can protect the things that are important. How can people reprioritize their resolutions and, and really make them stick or, or say like you've let something go? How do we find those boundaries within ourselves? Because it's so easy to, to say yes to that other parent who says, hey, you want to be a room mom when you know you don't have time to be room mom. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just saying this may have happened to somebody I know. I know, asking for a friend, right? I completely understand. So if your New Year's resolutions have kind of slid off the track, what I want you to do is go back and look at the factors that have been getting in the way of you holding this commitment to yourself okay. and ask yourself, where can I set boundaries with others or myself to carve out the time and the space and the energy to make these things happen? So maybe it's setting a boundary with your family that, hey, when mom's on the Peloton, she is not available for questions or help. Or yeah. maybe it's setting boundaries with coworkers. Please don't text me before 9 a.m. That's my family time. Or mm -hmm. setting a boundary with yourself, like I won't pick up wine at the grocery store because if it's in my cart, it's as good as, you know, I'm drinking it. Yep. That's such great, solid advice and, and like solid practical things that we've all experienced. Yeah. One of the biggest mistakes people make when it comes to setting boundaries are... I would imagine just not knowing where to start, but in your opinion, what are those big mistakes? I will say one of the biggest mistakes is thinking we've set a boundary because we've hinted at it, because mm. we've used body language, because when you know the kids come in to ask a question and I'm on the Peloton, I give them an eye roll and a fine, it's in the laundry room. Yeah. We think we're setting a boundary, but we're really just hinting or we're using passive aggressive behavior or expecting them to read our minds. In mm -hmm. order to set the boundary, we have to actually set the boundary using clear, kind language. That's, I think, the most important factor. That is such a good point because honestly, it's also, it, again, hurts that relationship. If you're not being clear and concise, the child thinks, oh, 
I'm just annoying to mom. That's a sad yeah. thing. If someone is new to the idea of setting boundaries, where do they start? I like the idea of employing a pause before you automatically say yes to anything. Mm. So thinking about the idea of your boss saying, can you add this project to your plate? Someone saying, can you be room mom? Your spouse saying, hey, do you wanna watch a movie tonight? Just employ a moment of pause. Sometimes it's a moment, sometimes it's an hour. Sometimes you say, I'll get back to you in a few days. Mm -hmm. Take a moment to check in with yourself and ask yourself, what do I need? And how do I feel before you automatically respond to someone else's expectation? All right. Great advice there.